Yes! Round Hello, I'm Mark. And I'm Ruth. And welcome to the Else Realm Diner. It came from the swirling depths of the multiverse, a sentient cafe, a cosmic mystery, transporting its clientele through all manner of realms. No one knows where the diner came from. All we know is that it seeks interesting conversation, warm memories, and good banter. On the menu today is the Adams family in honour of Jenna Ortega's amazing portrayal of Wednesday in the new series on Netflix. Yeah. Because it's so good. (laughs) It is pretty good. And and I think it warrants uh, a, a, a good conversation about its cultural context. Okay. And uh, and in that sense, the the legacy of the Adams family because I don't I don't know about you, but the Adams family are very dear to my heart. I uh, I absolutely adore them. They have certainly been in my life since uh, childhood. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but interestingly, their origins are surprisingly small. It's a little bit like when you learn just how few episodes of Faulty Towers there actually are. Uh, you go, you go. I was no. thinking it's like. I think I was thinking it's like based on Garfield, like sorry, not based on Garfield, but like Garfield esque in the sense that like it's grown beyond its meager origins. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, I, I I think that's 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 certainly true. And in this instance, uh, Charles Adams or Chaz Adams began. Uh, working for the New Yorker as a cartoonist uh, in 1932. And the first Adams Family cartoon was a one-panel uh, one panel gag, a one-panel cartoon from 1938. And over the course of the next 20-odd years, he drew a total of 58 Adams Family cartoons. Only 58. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Just 58 cartoons. But it grew to be such a... Uh, a crucial sort of cultural touchstone, particularly with the release of uh, the TV series. So 1964 to 1977, Adam's Family, uh, produced by uh, Nat Perrin, uh, deliberately took a quote-unquote less evil approach to the characters and the stories, (laughs) um, emphasising lighter, comedic and, quote, zany uh, more zany than spooky, indeed, um, aspects of the Adams family, and that's arguably, I suppose, where it really took root in in popular popular culture, is that it became, I guess, more accessible. Because obviously, not everyone reads the New Yorker, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I've seen a couple of those um, episodes. Um, I think I oh, watched fifth, the... incidentally, fifteen of which are. Uh, full episodes are available on the MGM YouTube channel to watch. Ooh. Yeah, in total, um, just just to just to confirm, in total they released sixty four episodes of that series. Okay, so still not not loads, loads. Is no, it? no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I watched a couple of those after I'd seen because my introduction to the Adams family, I think, was the Christina Ricci film in the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, she's not even really the main character, but it's all about Christina Ricci. <laughs> um, but um, so I've seen a couple of those episodes since um, since watching that when I was younger. Mm. And it very much felt like I was watching something like I Love Lucy. OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, sort of it and it, it, it did feel like goth light. Yeah, it is goth light. Uh, uh, you know, Gomez is actually quite a charming, goofy individual, as opposed to a, a stocky, um, slightly disturbing, you know, greasy-looking fellow. Um, the family are sort of reinforcing very approachable family values. It's very sort of, you know, I've never, I've never really seen it, but I know what Leave It to Beaver is all about. So it's very mm-hmm. kind of like... Um, canned laughter or sound you know that sort of yeah. thing that, that would be dis- de- de- deployed in the edit and uh but 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 it makes it accessible and i think that's that's really where i think it is goth light and undeniably a little bit you know if indiana jones gets lots of people into being an archaeologist or indeed into horror movies in some way mm-hmm. then adam's family gets people into being a goth surely 
No, no. No? Being a goth's all about the music. <laughs> well, it is, it is, but also... No, I'm sorry, I say this as an ex-goth, well, a goth in my youth. I don't think I'm an ex- you, know, you never be, you never lose your gothness. <laughs> um, do you know what I mean? Like... And I mean, questionably, maybe I wasn't a goth. Maybe is new metal goth? It probably isn't. But I sort of dabbled <sighs> in. The I don't know. It's like thing. emo goth, isn't it? Really? Uh, no, excuse me. Emos came after my time. I would not <laughs> be associated with the emo movement. It's just there's lines. Do you know what I mean? Well, actually, actually, it's bands like The Cure that are classic goth. And mm. and what's interesting about The Cure is that I didn't realize realize I was a Cure fan until a few years ago when i i listened to a cure playlist of some sort of anniversary and on the radio they were playing all these songs and i went oh my god i love the cure <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but actually what's interesting about and again it's a little bit like the adams family is that goth uh music therefore like the cure is surprisingly light touch there are there are playful yeah. elements to it there are fairground like aspects um but but it, it embraces and allows darker truths or reflections on death or feeling like an outsider to sort of come through i think yeah i mean i i personally think like the goth music and themes are really accessible to the lay person mm. um and i i think that those dark ideas live in in all of us you know that feeling of ostracizedness um, that comes through in the Adams family or, mm -hmm. you know, feeling different in a world where everything is one way and you feel like that's slightly not the same. And I mean, even kind of depressive thoughts and, um, you know, issues around mental health and stuff kind of come a lot. I, I, I feel like those subjects are not taboo within the alternative music community. Mm. Um, and I think that that is... You know, certainly when I was growing up, I didn't just want to hear sunshine and light and like, oh, no, my boyfriend broke up with me. What should I do? You know, kind of music. I wanted to hear, you know, like a, a truthful experience of somebody being really angry about something or mm -hmm. um, somebody feeling really annoyed or like down or, you know, just you know just the, the the range of emotions being covered mm. and i do think like within that within those genres bloody huge shot <laughs> like i'm like the alternative community as if that was just one thing but i do i do think that like within that you do get the lighter touch things you know I and i think actually that makes it very human but i just think like darker themes are covered talked about and, I, and actually a lot of the time it's men singing about being depressed and sad and things like that which is there's not really an outlet within um the pop mainstream world for men to discuss their feelings as openly mm. Quite possibly, quite possibly, and in that sense, it, I think it also touches on the idea of the you know the tortured artist Vincent Van Gogh, that kind of thing, and so on and so forth. I, I, but the, I suppose just to, to sort of steer this a little bit back towards specifically the Adams family, though, I think you see this in Charles Adams's other uh, cartoons in his oeuvre. Um, he has a, a fairly broad. Um, uh, approach to what he's drawing but it's always got a slightly critical eye I, I, I'll actually I lent Ruth a couple of books before um, we recorded today and she's looking as though she hasn't necessarily read them um, I really haven't <laughs> <laughs> They're literally picture books. Like this. I know, I've li they're literally here. I've had them next to me for like three days going, oh, I must look through them. Oh, okay. And well, then the problem is I've had a jigsaw on my coffee table and just like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's just it's, not a lot. I'm well, a single-tracked person, like one single-minded, you know, you can't present me with multiple options and expect me to do things. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm a bad friend. Well, Please you, don't I, hate me. You did call me to start list. recording today. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the point is that in one of those books, <laughs> published in 1984, uh, 85, I think, um, is actually uh, 
a collection that was first published in 1947 uh, that, that um, brings together a range of his work. And it's clear that he's interested in, in, in people, I would say, primarily. It is people. It's how uh, people relate to each other, uh, parents and children. It's how uh, people relate to consumerism and the, the extent to which, uh, you know, salespeople and, and spiel can, mm -hmm. can, can try to manipulate you. He was clearly uh, critical of some of these things, but also had a critical eye when it came to architecture. There's, a, there's an interesting example in that book where he sort of shows an American house through the decades, and, and one of them is... Um, a remodeled house. That's exactly Just, it. I'm yeah. literally looking at it right now. And one of them that he clearly loves the most, it basically looks like an Adams Family house, doesn't it? It's that kind yeah, of... Yeah, it's very gothic. Exactly, gothic house. Um, he he though he was though a, a cartoonist of his time. As I say, that collection was published in forty seven. He'd been working since the thirties, and there are some problematic depictions of, for example, people from Africa. Mm -hmm. So there are pictures of um, people living in huts, and it's often uh, making jokes about um, about witch doctors and this kind of thing. But even then, even though the the, the depiction and the, the the cultural deployment, as it were, of of references is is problematic to our our eyes today he's still looking at the veneer versus what's underneath so one of the cartoons there has a witch doctor saying well all of this is just for show i'm actually just giving him some medicine so he's implying that these people are actually complex and more complex than 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 even they give themselves credence for within the world of that cartoon yeah so it's it's interesting to see this 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 sort of collection and that's the reason why i lent you that one is because it's not just adam's family and I think it comes from precisely that sort of goth sensibility. I think Charles Adams felt like an outsider, uh, and yeah. felt like someone who was who was um, who see, clearly loved people, as I say, but also clearly, if you love something, you, you, you're quite happy to criticise it as well. Well, I I think as well, he's got an out, he's got a style, hasn't he, of the outsider looking in. Mm. Yeah, there's rather often... than the insider looking at what's yeah. going on. You get this sense of like voyeurism, I think, looking at his stuff. Definitely. Well, and actually, often I think either there are characters looking out through windows or in through windows, or indeed the cartoon itself feels like you're peering in, doesn't it, into someone's yeah, world. Yeah, I think because lots of it's circular, isn't it? Mm. So you get this sense that you're viewing it through maybe the aperture of a camera or a mm. telescope lens or something where you, you're, yeah. It's, it, there's, I, the, I definitely look at this stuff and think there's this sense of voyeurism of an outsider looking in at this world. Yeah, and, and well, uh, as a result of that, he's able to he's able to make some kind of fairly dry comments about what's happening. Dry, but I, I would say very insightful as well. Oh yes, um, I don't yeah. think that they're uninsightful. No, yeah. ab absolutely, and uh, uh, but but also therefore you have uh, not only room for social commentary but also some of it is just hilariously dark so for example one of the cartoons in that collection has uh, there's a, a, a contractor in someone's living room i think having painted the floor and he's painted himself into a corner and instead <laughs> of just waiting for the paint to dry he's hung himself from one of the sconces on the wall <laughs> He just got life is you know I I must I must life uh, is less important <laughs> yeah exactly than, than letting the, the floor dry. on this floor yes <laughs> yeah committed to his work um and and so I, I find I find in that sense a bit of a kindred soul in in Chaz Adams um and uh, and a little bit like with for example authors like H P Lovecraft who were a little bit younger than him um certainly in terms of when they published their work, uh, mm -hmm. I find myself having to find the relevance in their work um, and having that voice speak to me rather than just criticising precisely what's on the on the page, I think. Well, I think as well, the fact that you and I can look at those comics today mm. and find they have contemporary themes speaks to the longevity mm. of the work. Because that certainly isn't the case No, um, in a lot of things you have to put things into a historical context don't you to make mm. it relevant and things and i don't feel like looking at that i think it's making commentary that's relevant today because it's making commentary around families consumerism yeah, yeah. Uh, well and, so and so like that. i mean so to highlight one of the consumer and consumerist ones um uh, one comes to mind where hansel and gretel are 
outside the witch's house, which is made of of you know fondant and candy and stuff. And but it's got it's got it's got a label on it though, a safety label saying this fondant may contain colours and preservatives that may be harmful to the <laughs> <kind of> <laughs> And the witch is like, damn it. <laughs> so it's got this, yeah, it's got this, this, this wry sense of humor uh, and, um, and therefore utterly irresistibly in many ways. And, and, uh, you know, obviously with the TV series, it, as I say, it entered a broader popular cultural sort of reference point. And then obviously it was copied in some ways by the Munsters, which I think is even, yeah. even lighter, even less witty, yeah. even, I just don't like the Munsters to be honest. I used to, I think I liked no, it I, when I was a kid. I think I liked it when I, I was a kid. I'm with you on the Munsters. I, mm. I feel that it's a um, big rip off. Mm. I kind of feel like it's a bit, it's a bit stereotypical. It doesn't really add anything, you know, like you expect, Hmm. you know frankenstein to be this like hulking kind of dumb monster and, and he that's is what kind herman of, yeah. monster is and, mm -hmm. and you expect dracula to be old and a bit hammy and mm. he is and mm. so yeah you end up with this kind of like fun light kind of very friendly family horror with which i don't think is adding any of the satire or um interest and commentary social no. commentary that you get from the adams family yeah i think it's even more yeah it's even more viewer friendly uh, uh but also as well i think it's taking the surface level aspect of the adams family and running with it so having the the sexy wife for example um mm. you know whereas actually morticia adams is not only um mysterious and and you know uh classically glamorous and gorgeous but also as well she's uh, she's a hard working and um fiercely uh, protective mother for example that comes out in the comics yeah. in, in particular um and but, but, but interestingly though it was a it was a cultural response to uh, indeed a studio response to the release of the adams family in, in that sense it reminds yeah. me of the the balance that you saw in the 90s where two different studios had to release uh impact movies where great big meteors were coming to was it no be meteor, comets meteors meteors uh there'll be comets 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 were coming to earth and deep impact and armageddon um yeah you know uh, and, and actually there were a load of rip-off movies done by other like lesser studios because it was just literally this idea got floated didn't it yeah yeah and that was it it was yeah it was a disaster disaster exploitation if that's a thing um oh, yeah and so in this sense it, it was sort of horror exploitation uh released more or less at exactly the same time in, in the mid 60s um interestingly they had 70 episodes compared to adam's family 64 but i think adam's family uh did the better of the two without a doubt well i i think the the legacy the the longevity of it is to do with the fact that it's still exploring contemporary themes yeah Universal and themes, the, yeah, yeah, and the, and the, those themes, yeah, haven't dated. They're still th things that are with us today, mm. and they're still things that people kind of. I, I, I mean, I feel like there is a group of people that rail against, you know, things like consumerism and things like that. And I think the Adams family do that, but they do it in such a kind of warm and friendly way. <laughs> warm and friendly, and yet, though, as you say, dark, m m dark and drier drier than the monsters did um, oh, yeah well, i don't I, I genuinely don't feel like the monsters i i mean i liken the monsters to i don't know it's it's so meh isn't it yeah i think it is it is just a bit meh uh but but it does reflect the fact that the adams family and it's it's ilk it's so the genre had had firmly rooted itself in in um popular consciousness and it was an outlet for that spooky zany creepy halloween kind of vibe yeah uh, but also as well <clears throat> it was an opportunity to to talk about and to present sitcom like uh, responses to to society now uh, and also sorry cur current events and and this uh, this came to mind when we were first talking about the Adams family uh, i think um actually last weekend when uh, when we were going to record and, and didn't um we uh, uh, were talking on the phone, and, and actually, it occurred to me that the Adams family is uh, the Simpsons, the Simpsons of oh, its time. Oh yes, yes. You see, uh, in so much as the Simpsons, uh, I remember one of the producers. It might even have been Matt Groening himself, actually, on a on an anniversary. It might be in the 
15th anniversary or something of the simpsons or the, or the 10th in a documentary that, that was on youtube now saying that so the simpsons used to be countercultural. Whereas now, if you want to have a conversation with a random person in the airport, sit down, talk about Homer Simpson, and someone will join in with you. Yeah, it used to be much more hard hitting, didn't it? As yeah. well, and 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 um, satirical. And, yeah, and, and what's the word? Where controversial? Controversial. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was. It was very much more controversial than it is nowadays. Yeah. Whereas now, it's. I mean, the, the, if you <clears throat> if you look at, um, I think it, it's like Eminem. You know, when Eminem well, yeah. came out, he mm -hmm. was like so anti-establishment and he broke so many molds. And yeah. now he is the mold. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like he is just literally part of the, because he's been around so long. And I'm not saying he's got worse. No. I, I just don't think he's got barriers to break in the same way he did when he came through. And I think that that's the same thing that happened with the Simpsons. Like it broke the barriers and became the background m m stuff almost. And, yeah. and I think the Adams family almost had that same you know, process, didn't it? I think the Adams family did. Uh, but I think The Simpsons is a good analogy because they they eventually they had to start pushing against uh, the, their network. So they'd make jokes about being on Fox. Uh, and then eventually they had to start to start pushing against reality. They started making these really zany <clears throat> episodes where, uh, I mean, I remember when... Homer. Well, yeah, 3D Homer, but but beyond that, I mean, uh, you know, um, maybe a decade later, they were doing episodes where I remember uh, seeing on um, uh, at the end of the of the episode, you'd have a, a monkey character turn to the screen and say, "None of this episode makes any sense." Ah, and it was almost a, an excuse to sort of to to have a premise unfold, then burst the bubble because they're out of ideas. And I think I've seen that a couple of times now, where basically they're now just pushing against the fabric of reality. They've got nothing else, you know, of their reality. They've got nothing else really to rebel against. Uh, and there's actually, uh, you know, when you look at, at, uh, at The Simpsons and um, and talking about, about satire, uh, there's, there's quite a few essays online talking about how The Simpsons have become that thing that they were created to mock. Well, no, I, I think they have. I think mm. they've become the... I mean... They were really amazing when they first came out. Yeah. I, I haven't found them particularly relevant for many years now. I don't watch The Simpsons anymore. I mean, no. like, if it comes on the telly, I might sit and watch it. Mm -hmm. Not that mm -hmm. I do that anymore. But, you know, like... It's good it, back... It's, it's, you know, it's inoffensive background material. Yes. Whereas yeah. when it came out, it was really shocking. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was shocking, but also... And it was, it was also it, revolutionary because they didn't make cartoons for adults. And no. that's now... You know, Durga, everybody does that. Yeah, Archer, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but well, but 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 also, it's interesting how uh, when they first came out, I think I seem to recall in this country there being a reaction to the presentation of the American dream and the an American sort of uh, suburban life as being flawed as being rough around the ages of being you know rewarding an idiot husband and a, and having mm -hmm. a, a stressed out you know um worried uh wife and then having and also some like amazing songs like do the bar ram yeah the exactly <laughs> exactly yeah uh, but then don't have a cow man <laughs> but then arguably <laughs> arguably though that that genre has gone on to to become self-satirizing so family guy uh actually i I go through phases of enjoying it and then really not enjoying it because it's just it's just a series of sketches. It's a series of little vignettes that are knitted yeah. together to create an episode. I don't think it's actually as and clever I, I as, think, as it could be. I think South Park came out, didn't it? Yeah. When The Simpsons became kind of normalised well, at that point <laughs> and then took things to a whole other level. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's an episode... You know, isn't there an episode where... Uh, um, Cartman meets Bart or a Bart like character and Cartman's Cartman's done something really naughty I think he might have incited the town to turn against the Jewish population <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and, um, and he's there he's there like outside the principal's office going um Hey, what what are you here for? And this Bart character, this sort of you yeah. know, Simpson and uh, um, South Park looking Bart character goes, um, I am um, I cut the head off a a town statue and then I put it back again. And Carmen's like, 
whatever. Um, so, so again, that was literally South Park saying, look, you know, we're, we're picking up the bat and we're going to push even more against this stuff. And and actually, South Park is a really good example because it, it, it was literally born of two people's frustration growing up in an immensely boring little town and their frustrations at seeing how people plugged into their roles in society. Uh, and also as well, I remember... Um, have you seen Bowling for Columbine? Uh, the yeah. Day, yeah. I remember in that, um, they were interviewed as part of, one of the creators was interviewed as part of that documentary. And he was saying, oh, actually, the, 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 that tragedy, that shooting, and those boys, um, partly comes out of that frustration of being told, if you're, if you're rubbish here, I mean, his words were, if you're a piece of shit here, you're going to be a piece of shit for the rest of your life. Um, and this idea that, that well, there was so much railing around that time, wasn't there? Because yeah. like that was literally the time when Eminem was coming out. There was the Marilyn Manson stuff. Yeah. Everybody was like going, "If you listen to this music, you're going to go kill people." Yeah, you know. And and there was this whole backlash against the goth community and everything that was happening at that mm. time. Mm. Um, now, yeah, should, uh, there was almost this public hysteria at that point as well. We have yeah. gone very far off topic. Well, no, no, I don't. I don't think we. I don't think we have because. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that 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 we should have sympathy for 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 school shooters. Oh uh, God, no! No, no, no. But that but, wasn't that wasn't even on the table. No, no. But just in case, just in case. But but I feel as though the uh, the fact that 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 you can have such violent responses to this sense of being an outsider shows mm-hmm. that it's actually a necessary part of of culture. And in that sense, actually, it performs arguably. This is where. I put my anthropologist hat on again. Um, it performs a, a crucial cultural outlet. It's it's actually part of the system. It's not actually a. Mm. It's not actually uh, separate from it. Uh, and th- this is something I find fascinating when you observe, for example. That is t- very fascinating, actually. Well, yeah. Yeah, because if you when you're relating that idea and going. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, well, well, and it's because um, it's because it was so you know a statement of of rebellion has to be done in opposition to the thing you're rebelling against. And therefore, it has to have recognisable vocabulary, cultural vocabulary, Mm -hmm. in terms of clothing, in terms of food, language, hairstyle. You have to know that that person is wearing something that is not, you know, a a work uniform, for example. It's the opposite of that. And so Mm -hmm. it, 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 it exists in relation to it. It's part of the same dictionary or lexicon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think I think part of that lexicon is um, basically terrorism. I mean, terrorism as, as an extension of, 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 of a political uh, failure, as it were, to communicate. Um, but, but on the less extreme part of that, of that very vast... Um, uh, spectrum is uh, having counterculture that is satirical and having a space for it. And I think as soon as people start to feel as though they don't have the space or the room to, to crack a wry joke, to look critically upon their friends and family, or to ask questions about things like consumerism and music, mm-hmm. uh, then then uh, then bad things can happen. So I think I think there's there's, there's space for the Adams family. That, that continues to be relevant that's been echoed in the simpsons and in south park and to a lesser extent for example in family guy definitely yeah and so stepping stepping back from domestic terrorism um <laughs> we should... <laughs> that light conversation <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is actually i think where uh where the adams family particularly became relevant to me and i think the sounds of it to you and so it is it is that release valve it's a space and a place where you can actually meet uh in your mind at the very least in your head canon a family that won't that won't be uh difficult to fit in with because they actually encourage you to be yourself and in fact they they rail against you not being yourself if you if you become even if yourself is a little psychopathic murderous person yeah absolutely absolutely and and you know and and it, well, and of course, I mean, as you keep on doing, and I keep on cutting out of the edit because uh, you keep on bringing it up at the wrong time. <laughs> da, 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 da. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. The music is fantastic. The creepy and the creepy, mysterious <laughs> and creepy. They're all together, spooky. The Adam family. 
I think I will I think, now stop I think we should until it's a, time. A single. And then I will I will sing again for all of you avid listeners mm-hmm. when it comes to do the Adams Family rap. Oh, oh yes. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> This was my preparation. No, no, no. <laughs> I wasn't looking at some comic. <laughs> yeah, who cares about the source material, honestly? Um, I do care, but there are there are priorities here. Yeah, yeah, but but, but yeah, exactly. So in 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 uh, uh, in the nineties, nineteen ninety two, we had uh, the release of the Adams. Arguably. Family the best <laughs> um arguably the best yeah um iteration of the adams family uh in the form of uh, the adams family uh the adams family the can movie I, yeah can i do it okay go on go on. they do what they want to do say what they want to <laughs> say live how they want to live play how they want to play the adams family yeah exactly well done um thank you i'm here all week I do take requests. <laughs> I'm here for the rest of your life. Um, <laughs> I did also re- forget the bit where I was going. Do, 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 do. I remembered the. I remembered the flow. Yeah, but not the not the bars. The flow. Yeah. <sighs> Tragedy in my life. Anyway, so it was 1991, actually, not 1992, uh, when the Adams Family movie was released, and and the world was introduced to Christina Ricci. Ah, oh, Christina Ricci, but also as well, you know, you, you had just I think it, the whole thing was really well. Angelica Houston cast. was amazing. Angelica Houston as Morticia, uh, Raúl Julia, or Julia as Gomez, uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd, Uncle Fester. Yes, yes. Um, now the, the the only thing I mean uh, that the, 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 the I I I don't like about those films is that those two movies my eyebrows are raised well i don't like the fact that they both use the same trick actually they both go um uncle uh, uh uncle fester has has either gone missing or uncle fester has gone off and married someone random uncle fester is the lynch is the the lynch yeah. for the plot in both uh yeah I mean, no i'm with you on that it would have been nice to have something else happen in the I, second one i'm not overly enamored of the second one to be honest mm. i mean i i enjoyed it as a kid but it doesn't i don't think it it's well and I mean, yet, the first one i think was revolutionary the first one was but and dare yet, i say the, yeah yeah, yeah the, the second one has all of the uh the summer camp stuff camp oh yeah that is falls. really good isn't it yeah, yeah. exactly and, the, and where they're made to watch but Disney i still movies. don't <laughs> i don't i still don't think that's as good as the school play in the first one no yeah yeah oh where uh where um, where they're just slicing yeah. off arms and blood's flying everywhere and yeah yeah, yeah. And, and the audience is getting covered in blood and the family the Adams family just sitting there wrapped watching their children perform this bloodbath and the rest of the audience are like Bravo! horrified <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the audience are horrified and dare I say traumatized that yeah. they've just watched this extreme violence <laughs> extreme <laughs> Uh, but and this this is I mean where where do you stand though on because I think again this was my my introduction really to the Adams family proper because I'd seen a little bit of the TV series in reruns on British TV but I'd never really you know got into them where do you stand on how they use violence and threats of violence and that's not to say I don't mean ethically yeah. or morally but what do you think no, it no, means for question. them in terms of reality because I think they would actually be gutted if they killed each other. Oh, yeah, I do think so as well. I mean, I I think before you get into that, to be honest, I think you have to look at the characters and the dynamics within the family Mm -hmm. before you then say, are these threats real or not real? Because in a sense, they are, Mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah. Like, there genuinely are times where you get the sense that Wednesday is genuinely trying to kill Pugsley. (laughs) Or particularly when they're trying to kill Pubert, uh, the uh, the yeah. the baby in the second one, yeah, yeah. Woe to the um, Republic. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think I mean I think what drew me to this, to be honest, was the fact that they're ta- they were sort of marketed as a dysfunctional family, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. aren't they? But actually, when you when you watch that movie, they are one of the most functioning family. <laughs> from elements within it you know like Mm -hmm. when there are marriage problems they talk openly about it and they go to marriage counseling and that's and they're at it and and when there are problems with their kids they want to help and Mm -hmm. they they're genuinely interested in their kids like um 
desires, beliefs, dreams. Um, they. Do you know there was a, there was a point where uh, I think in the second one, uh, second movie, where um, Morticia says to Gomez something like, uh, uh, "I think they, yeah, they're about to have a baby or something, or or maybe they're about to consider sending the kids off to summer camp," and she's like, um, "I'm just a, like any woman, I just want to have it all, a family, you know, a, a career." Yeah. Um, but maybe there's not enough time for what I've always wanted to do. And he's like, what is it? You know, he's desperate to help her fulfill herself. Yeah. And she's like, I just want to join Satan's hellish crusade on earth. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you met, you shall, you must, you know. He's, he's, and I, yeah. I think as well, they did a really good thing of showing like a really healthy BDSM relationship where like there is so much consent within that <laughs> dynamic between the two of them yeah, yeah. but obviously they're they're really I- into it together yeah, yeah. and there's just so much good there's like the bit where Morticia Adams is walking through the greenhouse and just dropping the heads off all the roses <laughs> <laughs> which again that's actually a reference to to one of the cartoons actually yeah um, where uh, yeah, it, it, uh, but and what's beautiful about uh, about those little th- moments as well is that again, the, I think the 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 Chaz Adams cartoons were understated and actually often didn't really even necessarily need text. You yeah. just had the sense of oh, there's a woman in her greenhouse tending. Oh, oh, she's she's chopping the heads off the roses, you know. Uh, and but it's just built effortlessly into this 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 dynamic. In fact, the opening shot of the Adams Family movie is a reference to one of his more famous cartoons where they're about to. Uh, mm-hmm. Pour boiling oil uh, or water onto a family of um, of carolers outside the door. Yeah. So they all go ding dong merrily on her, and the camera just pans up the house, and they're just there like grinning, just about to pour, to pour the stuff on them. Which, which again is this brings me back to this interesting thing of of um, of what is their intent with this violence? Because I suppose the joke is that we never actually see gore for example and we never actually see yeah and they and you never actually see them succeed at really hurting anybody do you No, but i, I understand mean, there's a little bit of pretend torture isn't there yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah like uh, yeah like my tissue on the rack yeah yeah and there's but there's also isn't isn't there a bit where like they're torturing fester or something to get him to remember something I oh yeah yeah <laughs> but, but but and he's loving it but the <laughs> but the point is you never um uh, you never, yeah, see the result of that violence, but you understand the the inclination. For example, you understand that that Wednesday wants to burn down the summer camp. You know, I, I, you can relate to going. I'll just go away when someone annoying is at the front door. You know, uh, and that's possibly an introvert thing as much as anything else. Mm. Um, and so maybe that's. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the joke of the Adams family, isn't it? It's like the they take it to the next level. And you believe that they would do these things, but you never actually see the. It's like a consequence-free world. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, like the other com- thing I think is is sorry. I'm just going to make this little point before uh-huh. we move on. The other thing I think it's worth talking about with regards to the family is that they're extremely wealthy. Yeah, they're so wealthy. They have. That, they yeah. keep servants. They they're so wealthy that they can pretty much do whatever it is that they want to do, yeah. and in some regards, that makes them uh, unrelatable. Unrelatable, but also they are unshackled from yes from the rest of society. They don't need to please anyone. Um, mm-hmm. They don't need to to to. They don't need to get a job. They don't need to, you know, uh, and, and those spaces. And a lot of the humour as well comes from, doesn't it, this very strange dynamic interacting with something incredibly normal, for yeah. example, like the marriage counsellor or, or the, the legal policeman. system. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like, yeah. And and the fact that it, it, they just are unwilling to bend who mm. they are in any way mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. be, you know, anything other than themselves and but 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 also as well in that sense uh they they they're so accepting of the quirks in other people so so when they have a psychopath turn up at the house they're like oh oh how many people have you killed yeah that's that sort of thing oh yeah um there's the revelation isn't there where it's like He's unhinged. They're trying to say, "Is it really Fester?" And it's like he's un- he's unhinged. He's deceitful. Blah mm-hmm. blah blah. And it's like it is my brother. He's <laughs> got all of these things. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Well. And so that's that's what makes it makes them magnetic 
And as you say, I think I think I think the the line is the the, the ultra violence. So if you actually saw genuine horror, you know, if you actually mm. saw the the carolers being being uh, boiled injured. alive uh, or injured by that, then it wouldn't be funny. Um, but as it no, is, it wouldn't be. No, but as it is, it is funny. And also, but you never get the sense that they're being cruel. Um, they're being, they're expressing that sort of id, that kind of desire. As yeah. That's um, a really, yeah, they're kind of impulsive in the sense, aren't they? Of like, I want this to happen. Yeah. I don't want this to happen. I'm going to well, react to this in an extreme way. So what, what, one of my favourite uh, original cartoons is where um, Morticia's at the top, at top of the stairs and Wednesday's come come to her and go mother mother he uh, pugsy's trying to poison me and she says uh, the the line in the cartoon because all this is implied the line in the cartoon is just well don't come whining to me tell him you'll poison him right back (laughs) 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 so it's it's yeah i like it I, i but but what's interesting is is that this 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 model of a family can be uh can be criticized as well and there's room i think for growth in terms of what happens next obviously Mm -hmm. we've just had the wednesday uh tv series on netflix uh in which you see for example moments of her response to to arguably a very smothering um loving family dynamic constantly having to see your parents make out in the most sort of passionate way for example it's just eye rolling for her but actually before we talk about that I just want to just quickly touch on the fact that there was a, uh, and there still is, a very popular cartoons. ongoing... Cartoons. Well, there were cartoons. Uh, there were, um, uh, which which I think, you know, ha- have quite a close uh, relationship to the TV series in terms of their accessibility. Uh, yeah. But there was also actually a musical. There's a the- theatrical musical released. Really? The, I didn't know the, that. Of the Adam Summer, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's currently on uh, doing a, a, a tour around the UK. Uh, I actually went to see um, see it when a friend of ours was was performing in a, an amateur production of it. Um, brilliantly done, though. I say amateur, but it was, you know, it was really high quality at uh, the uh, the big theater in Keswick and uh, what's interesting about that show and how it relates to the Wednesday Adams TV series is that it instead of revolving around uh, uh, Uncle Fester it revolves around Wednesday and the Adams family musical comedy as it's called the musical comedy is specifically about uh, Wednesday Adams growing up and uh, Shot this, she she had she develops this shocking secret and that is that she's fallen in love, and she's fallen in love against her 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 better judgment with a sweet young man from a respectable family and I, in the sh- in the version of the show that I saw he you know he has like a, a sweater around his neck he's very kind of oh he's preppy yeah very preppy very Ivy League kind of thing very not Adams in that sense mm. but Wednesday is is. Uh, is is smitten um now they, they they end up having the twist that they do in uh the adams family um values movie where uh actually to become an adams you, she kind of basically has to scare him more or less to death um kind of thing towards the end it's one of those things where um where it, it, again it, it's the two-tone it's the weirdness it's that tension between the the murderous intent that they express and the incredibly loving family that they are that means that mm. i think sometimes writers don't know what to do next with them where do they go from here uh, and in the case of the musical they have this this whole thing where um they're trying to to yeah they, they invite i think he might be the son of a of a of a congressman as well so they invite oh the, this normal family to the house it doesn't particularly go well you know but they do notice actually that in the political from memory in the political sort of backstabbing and intrigue they find sort of kindred spirit actually because actually politicians are horrible people <laughs> yeah no that's that's <laughs> quite know. funny so there's some of that in there and interestingly fester i seem to recall falls in love with the moon he spends the whole the whole yeah the whole uh the whole um show uh writing music for the moon and singing about how, how much he loves the moon because he, he does howl at the moon uh in the yeah. in, in the movies um also i think in one of the cartoons. i mean i i think this is one of the difficulties with the Anders family is where to take it because I think as a family unit and at the age that they they are 
yeah yeah that it's very good as a little satirical family i think it works really well as like a one-off or maybe two two film series yeah or these little bits where you mm-hmm. get like these episodic or cartoon bits mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but i think um and this is kind of it's like how do you develop it yeah um and bring it again to contemporary audiences, which is where I think, you know, so I remember you showing me a while ago, I think it was called Adult Wednesday. Yes. Which was YouTube, a YouTube yeah. channel. It's still there, thankfully. I, hasn't been taken down. Yeah, I, I, did, I, think, I downloaded them all just in case, though. <laughs> <laughs> which, I I mean, I watched that and, and definitely, I mean, I think this is the thing. I think Wednesday is by far the most interesting character. Yeah. yeah. And and I think she's interesting because she is presented as being very, very clever. Yeah. And she always outwits her rather dumb, bumbling brother. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. very articulate again, which is not something that her brother does. Mm-hmm. Um and you know, she's she she plots and conspires rather than reacting instantly. So it's very thought out and not impulsive so there's this kind of like malevolence mm, to, her, mm. to her that that kind well, of gives her it, but it, it, in the in the second book that i lent you uh the adams family and evolution um yeah. they that's actually a really good uh a really great book because actually they, they have chapter elements which are broken down by character and one of them when it comes to wednesday uh the, the initial sentence is wednesday is her mother's daughter Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and I think, uh, she, again, in a very relatable way, she relates to her, to her mother in a slightly rebellious way and to her father in a, in a sort of like, uh, in a, in a loving, but slightly cringy way. She, she's a little bit embarrassed yeah, by I the times. Think, yeah. I think she's a bit, um, what's the word? She suffers him in a lovable way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and 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 therefore, I think the question of what happens next with her, if she's the more, more most interesting character that we're going to follow, and also as well, logically, she's the first one that's going to break away. You know, she's the older child. Uh, that's one of the reasons that the Adult Wednesday YouTube series, I think, works really well. Is that she's she the first episode is, she, is her looking for a, a place to to rent. She, <laughs> she, she, yeah, she, and yeah. I think that was the the lovely bit about that is like, how would Wednesday go into the world? Yeah, because she's. I mean, I don't know if you got this sense but i mean i certainly got the sense that pugsley's probably going to live with his mum and dad forever possibly yeah but a little bit like uncle fester he hasn't moved out of the house you know he just lives around that around the place yeah i I kind of get the thing that wednesday wants to kind of break out on her own and kind of do these things and then there's a lot of comedy because of her character in her just doing the mundane yeah getting an office job it's a little bit like do you remember watching the house of the the house husband, the XVQs, the house husband things that we were watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way of the house husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is like a Yakuza yeah. boss just wandering around trying to be a house husband and buy his <laughs> wife gifts. And well, like when a spider sushi. comes into the house, he's like, You want to yeah. move it on my turf? <laughs> 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 I'll show you who's boss. Yeah, exactly. Or, for example, the, uh, one of my favorites is uh, the episode where she's cat called. A bunch of guys just go, hey pretty you know you should smile more and um she brings around these thugs to their house and she's just yeah. like this is crusher he's excellent at identifying actionable body parts to, to, to point <laughs> out <laughs> they're gonna follow you around and just just be your you be your best friend <laughs> so, yeah and i think i think actually that's where again it's hard to know exactly what to do with wednesday and with the adams family because actually um uh as she grows, as she becomes, for example, the target of of unwanted advances and 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 people telling her she should look a certain way or be a certain way or do a certain thing, you wonder to to what extent is she actually going to be uh, bitter about that as opposed to merely mm-hmm. individualistic? Um, and just, just this is, I suppose, where the Wednesday Netflix show comes in. But also, I suppose, I suppose uh, we should also just touch on the fact that this is exactly the problem faced by the Simpsons. Mm. They only work. This is why Bart is an eternal eight-year-old. You know, they can't have yeah. him grow up. They can't have Homer and, Mar- and Marge age. They can't have Lisa actually go to university. And when they when they do show it, they 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 have sort of speculative jokes about 
where the characters are going to end up but it's it's a it's a it's a 10 second scene they they have no sense of actually how to take this this family forward uh, which arguably is one of the reasons why the simpsons has actually i think drifted off into obscurity in terms of mm. cultural relevance really um but but therefore do you think that, that the netflix wednesday series is a good attempt to to solve that problem how do you solve a problem like wednesday adams yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's a faultless TV show. No. I mean, I really, really enjoyed it, but mm-hmm. I do think there are some things that I would like to mention a little bit later on about things that I didn't think worked so well. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, yeah, I, I think Wednesday is the most interesting place to go with it. Mm-hmm. I don't think they went as far, did they, as taking her to, you know, moving out of home and all that jazz. They sort yeah. of had her as school age, yeah. which I think is a really nice thing. But again, I, I think it's limited in terms of like, she's going to have to stay school age for this premise, this current rendition to work. Possibly. I mean, that said, I, I can see them going on to to college. Uni. Yeah. Yeah. I you don't know. know. I mean, I, I, I feel maybe not. But And I, I think as well, they've done a couple of things with... Um, the world building, which I thought was a little bit of a cop out, mm-hmm. but I'm, you know, What's I'm happy. Chance? Oh, okay. So I think they made uh, the Adams family uh, part of a larger, wider culture. Yeah, sort of uh, uh, to use an, an old circus and, term, sort of freak community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I feel like I know why they did that because they wanted to have the school full of, you know, various oddballs, exciting and creatures yep. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, but I think in a way that's sort of taken us to, you know, the X Men school or uh, the peculiar children thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miss Miss or, was it Peregrine School for the peculiar, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, uh, or so, I mean, or the most obvious parallel being Harry Potter. Well, I was going to say Harry Potter, but then I didn't because I was thinking like all of the people in there are wizards. Well, I suppose it's the same kind of thing, isn't it? But yeah, and there's well, other well, creatures well, going on. Well, and yeah. let's, just, let's just take a moment just, just to look at that. In so much as, for example, uh, in in the world of Harry Potter, you have this this culture of people spread everywhere. So it's implied that every town will have a wizard or two, wizarding family or two, yeah. uh, and they come together in certain places at certain times. So at the Ministry yeah. for Magic or at schools or at, at, at the Quidditch World Cup, uh, that's more or less what you see in in the Wednesday shows, this idea that every yeah. town will have a weirdo, will have a weird family um, or, or, you know, or, or a vampire or something. And this this school is one of those places a where siren. They, they all come together. Or oh, a siren, exactly, yeah. Where they all come together. And I suppose learn to be more weird? Is that... I don't know. I, I mean, I think this school? might... Well, no, like, I think this might be a thing of, like, the internet, you know. Because, like, I think if you were born in the 90s and you didn't fit in within your local community, mm-hmm. you were an outsider. Hmm. And I think if you're a teenager now and you don't fit in within your local community, you can find a load of other people online yeah, yeah. who are just like you. And so I feel like the pressure of fitting in with your immediate geographical location and the people provided in that area mm. has kind of been taken away. And mm. what you actually have is this, this why, and I'm not, I, I mean, I'm absolutely not saying that you know social media and all this kind of stuff is solving it, yeah <laughs> yeah and that it doesn't come without problems but there definitely is a sense of like people can find people mm. across the globe that they identify with and so this idea of an outsider that used to be so prevalent like in the 90s and early 2000s sort of feels a little bit not redundant but morphed into something else well, it's it is precisely a subculture, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like this is what's happening. Is so this is kind of like, kind of showing that. So like, I I feel like it wouldn't have been realistic to put all of this group of people together in a school previously because, like, due to the nature of the world and the fact that it wasn't connected in the same way, these people might never have interacted. But now mm. there's this kind of community that's driven through online interaction it makes it much easier mm. that it could be that this kind of place has come together um, and, and that well, you I, might well, find more people 
Yeah, well, I mean, actually, just 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 to briefly, uh, we should quickly just just put into the mix that the um, there's recently been uh, animated uh, computer animated movies of the Adams family. So one and mm -hmm. Adams family one. Adams Family One, the first Adams Family animated movie, starring, for example, Shelley's Theron as Morticia, released in 2019. The second one, 2021. I started watching the 2019 one. The reason why I'm mentioning it is that actually they go out of their way to highlight this this sort of almost Transylvanian um, gypsy culture. Actually, mm -hmm. so so this idea, and and that's something that I can I can see schools like this coming out of that so families mm -hmm. who 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 band their fortunes together to build a a, a curriculum and a school perhaps mm -hmm. but again that's also very harry potter <laughs> yeah it is you know? but i also feel like it's taking us away from the original premise of the adams family that they were this singular Unique. Well, but they weren't singular, were they? Because because there's, there's an Adams for every occasion. That's the point, isn't it? It goes on. The family tree is massive. Um, all these weirdos in the graveyard when they have the family gathering before uh, Fester's uh, wedding. Uh, it, you know, oh, and cousin the big it, party. for example. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You know, fine. You destroyed cousins. my point. No, I, no, no, I don't, I don't. No, I don't. I don't think I have. I think. I think what 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 we're doing is we're just drilling a little bit down into it because because mm. actually what you would have there is a network which was previously about family, previously about private connections, previously about about family gatherings. Um, uh, that 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 you can again I can see because it's clear in the in the Wednesday sh show that the school is well established. It's been there for oh yeah for hundreds of years. So you can sort of see some of this stuff, whether it comes from you know the mother country or something, um, or whether it comes from, um, which actually is referenced in uh, in the Adams Family uh, 1991 film. They talk about them, the old the old country doing the was it the babushka dance, <laughs> babushka. Did you know? Is it like um, Russian? Yeah, it's like a Russian dance that the, the, okay. they they do in um, in the wedding celebration. So whether it's that sort of connection or whether it's it's one of 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 people meeting in a sort of you know maybe a halloween gatherings or something or, yeah. at their, or at their um their witch's coven building this this network that floats beneath the surface of american yeah. culture i can see that i can see and, that, it, and that is very harry potter isn't it because it's like the culture that everybody in that community knows about that's just beneath the surface of the yeah yeah, yeah. and i mean the thing is it's a good idea yeah you know jk rowling hit something that was a good idea well she did but but also i think i think in that sense the what the wednesday series does is instead of having where the wizard where the wizarding wizarding community in the harry potter books has to magically hide themselves and obscure buildings and this kind of thing in in the adams family you actually seem to have a society that just doesn't want to look at them um you know yeah so, so you have this no, that's town really interesting next to the school don't you that's like well we need them monetarily they bring tons of 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 vital commerce into the area but we don't want to have to go over there <laughs> you know yeah. we don't have to, to to acknowledge that these people are here and that's that's it i think that's the key thing there is that that's not that's why they're not it's not the wizarding world you know yeah um but that said though what what, what do you make of uh of of in that sense the episodic structure of the show because on the one hand i think it, there's there's room for a bit of wit and and amusement there every episode for example has as woe in the title wednesday's child is full of woe uh woe is the loneliest number friends or woe uh woe what a night <laughs> <laughs> you reap I, what you I, I didn't notice that quick, yeah no i mean to be honest <laughs> i i loved it i really did love it but i i mean i i i really like you know a mystery yeah um and that's basically what it was wasn't it it was like wednesday goes to school and solves a mystery well but, and but except along uh, the way uh, yeah mm-hmm you know, along the way, the interesting stuff happened. Yeah, I, I suppose. But the, the problem is, it, 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 to me, it felt like it felt that's where it feels again, like Harry Potter. Um, it felt like Wednesday Adams and the Chamber of Secrets, basically, um, mm -hmm. or Wednesday Adams and you know, and the insert, you know, because it had a little bit, had a werewolf, um, mysterious yeah. monster creature type thing. Uh, uh, they are not unlike the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, you had, I yeah. I mean, I didn't. I, I, I think, like, 
it's so for me i enjoyed the little murder mystery thing but yeah. i feel like that was that was the kind of meta plot well but there was also things like together. like the house rivalries as well and the uh yeah the, the sports day which felt very uh was it the wizarding whatever it's called the wizarding cup or the goblet of fire that's mm. it, the goblet of fire um it's is that, but, the, but, is that is that the show's problem or is it just that actually the harry potter world drew on stuff that happens in private schools no, I think th I think the problem is that the Harry Potter world drew on stuff that happens in schools, didn't it? Yeah. And anything, and, and it's been so successful, it's permeated every area of public culture yeah. that that any um, any attempt to do something adjacent to that, even if it's different, is going to draw parallels. Yeah. But I mean, to me, the 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 little the backdrop and stuff wasn't really the stuff that made it golden. The things that kind of made it golden for me were that was that cello solo oh yes yep mm -hmm. uh, where i was just like oh my god and then Painted you black. know there was yeah and yep. then the dance mm -hmm. in the prom mm -hmm. and i loved that you know blossoming friendship between her and her roommate mm -hmm. but um, also also as well her and uh, even her her apparent rivals so when when she yeah. has an interest, she uh, gains their respect, doesn't she? Yeah. Well, and there's a moment after the dance where she has a quiet moment moment with her, and actually, and this this is one of the beautiful things about Wednesday as a character and the way that she's written in this series is that she's not um, insecure. So yeah, you know, whereas whereas for example, your Harry Potter's and your other young adult fiction is often about you know, oh, I feel so rubbish. Um, she doesn't feel rubbish for a moment. Uh, but what she is trying to do is trying to understand her place in the world. Yeah. Uh, and so when it comes to even someone who is a a, a, a love rival, a social rival, this this siren woman uh, girl, young lady sat in front of her uh, uh, in the in the the midst the aftermath of a of a slightly you know. A bit of a nightmare evening in terms of uh, how a school dance should go. Um, she listens to her and actually they connect because mm -hmm. because Wednesday is um, well, it's interesting. Do you think do you think Wednesday? I, I know we're sort of bouncing around here a little bit and we're, and we're presuming, I think, that people have watched the show after listening to this. Um, yeah. But do you think that Wednesday is portrayed as because uh, I've seen people say these things? Is she either, for example, on the spectrum? Is she extremely stoic in her approach to life? Is she psychotic? You know, what 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 is it that that gives her that sort of um, slightly statuesque stillness in terms of her approach to her social approach to to people as much as well? Her I, I I mean, I don't think labeling her is necessarily i mean it's limiting isn't it in terms of like mm -hmm. she's a character that's existed for a long time and she was kind of written before a lot of these labels you know existed and mm -hmm. if you put the label on her you sort of limit where she can go mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so in that sense i don't really well actually feel... sorry in that sense that's something i always find frustrating in in dramas where they talk about you know he's a pure psychopath but then they'll show this quote-unquote pure psychopath demonstrating love demonstrating that they care about oh, something. Yeah. you know um uh dexter for example is a prime example where sometimes hannibal lecter hannibal yeah he goes out of his way and he yeah, runs yeah. off with yeah. clarice and they have Absolutely. a love affair yeah when actually a pure psychopath probably would care more about personal uh survival than than yeah someone else. so yeah so in that sense the the label wouldn't help but it's interesting how people uh, people are trying to understand why is Wednesday the way she is? And uh, and and to I mean, extent. if you if you get some, I, I mean, I think if you think about it in terms of character traits, and you think about her like in the, in the sense of like she she accommodates all of her own needs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So she is not unhappy with with you know if nobody else was there. I, yeah. Although this does toy with that idea a little bit, doesn't it? But yeah. I think you, you, she fulfills her own needs in terms mm -hmm. of social interactions, and you know she doesn't get bored. She, you know, she's got ideas about writing and opus and stuff like this. And um, well, so in part, that, I'm part, well, I'm sorry, I'm part of those needs is actually taking time to write that. You know, yeah, being disciplined, and, and I think as well, like she's obviously she just does things to an amazing standard. You know, like she's a great fencer and she's a great celloist and whatever she does she seems to just do um at a level that is you know savant level almost or even though we're not labeling things um 
but and I and I think as well she doesn't have any sense of shame or embarrassment about who she is so she kind of just does what she wants to do mm. and so I I mean yeah there's elements of some of these things but I don't necessarily think you know if if you are happy in yourself and you genuinely don't need other people's approval mm. and you're probably a genius several times over I don't think she is. I think I think she's had an unconventional childhood, which has meant that she's learned fencing. And well, she's learned well, this is yeah. So, but I I think that cello solo, I was on TikTok because obviously TikTok's right about everything. <laughs> yeah, professional um, celloists struggle, don't they? Yeah, professional. So, yeah, so so she's doing things at a standard that is extreme, but well, then that does counteract with her not being able to solve a fairly easy murder mystery well and this is because this is i think one of her weaknesses as as uh, portrayed in the show um is on the one hand she loves drama so she's drawn into this kind of like you know i must i must solve this this you know arch nemesis mystery who is at the, at the, at the core of this this swirling um event that's surrounding me but also she is so convinced of her own opinion and her own assessment of the situation that she's completely blinded to to Christina Ricci as as her role in the in the series. You know, if you again, we're presuming you've seen it, but I don't necessarily want to spoil everything about it in, mm-hmm. the, in this episode. Uh, but she's blinded to to where she should be looking, uh, and uh, because 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 she's so convinced by her own assessment and her own understanding of the evidence and her own actually uh, often uh, ethical and moral stance on things um, mm-hmm. when, when it comes to how she just presumes that that that, uh, that 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 if someone has a monster inside and they're a tortured artist they're going to have to be um tyler in this case uh, is going to have to be the bad guy um when actually it's more uh, i don't know i mean I, yeah i i kind of felt a little bit like it was just a bit of a bad writing to be honest well, it's bad Maybe writing, not bad but, writing. But, but in in a TV show, all we have to go on is the writing for the portrayal of the character. No, I know, but I I I did I thought I thought it was bad writing in the sense of like I think the the murder mystery wasn't written very well. <laughs> no, no, I agree. <laughs> it yeah. was very simplified, and yeah. I mean the thing is, it was an enjoyable little sequence, but mm-hmm. yeah, and it was annoying that she was so righteous. Yeah. About what she thought. But again, I didn't see that. I didn't. I, that's not my Wednesday. <laughs> my Wednesday wouldn't do that. No, but, but, but actually. Again, and but, I have literally picked and chosen the bits I like of Ge- uh, yeah, General Ortega's exactly, portrayal and been exactly. like, that's right. And this bit's wrong. <laughs> no, but, well, but then again, actually, I, I think, I think uh, this is answering the question of what do you do next with Wednesday Adams? Mm-hmm. Because what they're doing if you want to see it not just as bad writing, because obviously they, they were trying to, they weren't quite, I think they weren't quite sure where they were pitching this series. It, was it for, for, yeah. for people who are now in their thirties? Was it people for who are now, you know, in, in that young adult genre? And they were trying to do both. So I think that's why the, why the mystery isn't the most complex thing in the world. But also, I, they needed to go knives out on it. Didn't they really? Well, exactly. Yeah. And, they, and, they and then may, she needed to Sherlock Holmes it. Maybe, but, but, but this, this, this is that that question of what do you do next? Because what arguably they've done is they've they have pulled apart and criticised some of those things that 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 she. F- so you know, so at the beginning of the, of the show, she feels as though she's outgrown her family. You know, she's in the car, she's looking at her parents, and she's like, "Oh, can I just mistake. have a moment here to bemoan something?" Uh huh. Catherine Zeta Jones. Uh, yeah. Like- yeah. I <laughs> right. Listen, maybe I'm biased because Angelica Houston fucking nailed that shiz. Mm-hmm. Like she absolutely rocked that world. But Catherine Zeta Jones, who I actually like, I was just like, oh my god, this is so bad. Morticia was terrible, and I was thanking that she was in it so little. And I love Morticia. Yes, I agree. I don't think she was the best Morticia portrayal, and uh, I didn't miss her. When I should have been the best, her. not the best, yeah. as in yeah. maybe the rock bottom example. And yet, 
what we're seeing is this question of what do you do next with the Adams family? Morticia has become an overbearing mother, certainly from through Wednesday's eyes. Yeah, but again, Morticia, I don't feel... Morticia is also shown in this show to have an ego and her sense of self intimately connected to her high school heyday. So actually they're criticizing the fact that she hasn't yeah. really moved on from high school. She's still got that sense of, well, I was the popular girl at school, the popular goth. And she's sort of swanning around the school when she's dropping yeah. off the kids a little bit. And again, I didn't, and, I, I, I think what they did to her was bad. Yeah. Well, but it's through Wednesday's eyes to a certain extent. Yeah. But also as well, what we have in that, in that Wednesday, seeing her parents for, for what they are now. And also, also in their totality, she loves them, but also she sees their flaws. She loves her father, but she sees that he's possibly a little bit simpering and obsessed with his with her mother. Um, a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, extremely. And I, although also, <laughs> in that sense, I should say uh, the casting I think was excellent. Um, oh yes, for Gomez. Uh, some, Gomez was amazing. Well, some some people were were um, were were criticizing. Uh, by saying, "Oh, the show's gone woke," and and he was like, "Did you ever?" Well, again, the answer is no. You never saw any of the original cartoons or what what the source material was. But no, I mean, I actually thought that was. I thought bringing in like the the ethnicity of the dad more fully, and her having that dual ethnicity, mm -hmm. which really isn't commented about. I no. thought that was great. I yeah. was like, "Yes, give uh, her like a setting inside of like." you know modern world yeah makes that, sense to well, me and in that sense lewis uh lewis uh Guz, guzman guzman uh is uh, is a puerto rican actor and and i think he's done so well a little bit like actually uh charlize theron in the movie monster they've done mm -hmm. a really good job of making him just hideous he just like this hello you know kind of, <laughs> but but he's also just like just like um that that stubby slightly greasy slightly enamored um, but also incredibly loving man that we see in the in the cartoon. So I think he was great mm -hmm. casting. But what she's seeing there is is the parents as as rounded humans, flawed humans, as opposed to parental figures. Uh, and she has to. The question is, what does she do? How does she do? What does she do with that? Does she completely break away from them or not? And in that sense, the school setting is a great way, a great place to take her next. Uh, yeah. I, th I think the only character that they. Um, that they don't do this with is Uncle Fester. He's portrayed as a, as, a, as I think, a very different Fester. Actually, he's much, um, much more, uh, much less sort of bumbling. He's he's got a career as like an international uh, mm. thief extraordinaire. Um, he's on the run from the police in this show. Um, well, I mean, that's one of the things that I well, I I, I get I don't mind the bumbling having gone mm -hmm. because I I feel like it's elevated a little bit from slapstick yeah yeah and I, I i find that a good change um i do think they got right about the impulsivity of the character yeah yeah you know the fact that he just turns up robs a thing does a thing you know <laughs> and he's just kind of you know going from moment to moment in this kind of impulsive crazy way yeah and Yolo. he's not yeah, he's not really, and, and, but but I I feel very much like that is the essence of the Fester character. Yeah. yeah, you know that he he you know goes to the shops and ends up in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. And so uh, I feel like they got the essence, but elevated it from slapstick. Yes, and I think that's that's actually why Morticia feels a bit disappointing because we're, yeah. see, we're seeing a flawed par parental character as opposed to seeing but they also degraded her didn't they because they just made her this one note mother character no who I, had no i don't i think i get i think I, what they so, made what they made her was what wednesday sees of her but that's actually, only yeah no i get what you're saying but that's oh, that's giving so much license yeah to bad writing I know. and i think Possibly you have to, and I mean, this is the thing. Like, I'm sitting here criticizing the hell out of it. I bloody loved this show. <laughs> so, it's what we do. It's what we do. You know, we yeah. love Avatar and we're like, oh, it's rubbish. Um. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's pull it to pieces. But I mean, no, I do feel like she hits one note because she hits the, you know, the, the, she was like this high school 
you don't get the sense that she's career driven you know that she that there's this multifaceted intelligence about her no. you get this like she was swept off her feet by by gomez in high school she got lardy dar in love got married and she's been in love and happy and only ever been a mother since and, and now her also, daughter's turned also, into a teenager she's also possibly a little bit di- uh discontented as well maybe yeah yeah yeah. And again, I mean, I just, they, I, I think we had an elevating of Fester and I think we had a, a denigrating, is that the right word, of Morticia? We had her become less what she was. Maybe, but then again, I, I can't help but think it's partly of an aspect of the fact that this is Wednesday's no, I, show. I, can and, I just say, so, I think that does work as a, as a device in the yeah. sense of like, in order to become a teenager and separate from your family, you do have to, in essence, go through a, a phase, don't you, of seeing your parents not as immortal, yeah. no, know all people and, seeing care, that, and seeing them where, caregivers. Seeing them where they are, in fact, lacking for their own standards. Seeing yeah. their hypocrisy, seeing their flaws, seeing their, their failures and seeing and where, where seeing they're their still... Exactly, where they're still yearning for something that they haven't yet yeah. got. Yeah. And I think you have to make that break and go, I could make a decision for myself. It might even be better what, than what my parents can make, or, or at least they should. I, I need to make some mistakes for myself in order to do that move away, break away kind of thing. Yeah. And I think that's where the tension comes between teenagers and their parents, because you're basically navigating, aren't you, this no don't do that you're not ready yes i am ready what are you talking about battle well, that yeah. happens well but, but, also, I, well, but also you also you're also navigating the fact that the grown-up the parent knows that the child is also not going to act self-actualize to 100 percent in that sense yeah they are going to fall short of some of their own ambitions and the parent yeah. knows this and it's not like they're trying to hold them back but what they're trying to do is say look I'm, we're all human here, <laughs> like you know, yeah. um, and that, and out of that comes sometimes some very difficult years, and I think that's something of what's happening in this show. And yeah, actually, and actually that, in, I uh, think, uh, uh, so, yeah. and in that sense, Uncle Fester has space to be the fun uncle because he's not a parent. Yeah, he doesn't have to do that. And I, I think actually, what you're saying there about how I, I think you, that is a forgivable like. Thing, isn't it if, if you if you view it through the lens of this is told from Wednesday's point of view Wednesday is seeing her mother through this lens yeah. and that's then how she's being portrayed I think that does sort of work I mean I, I did think the bloody secret that they those two were carrying was like ugh, who cares like yeah yeah yeah. I mean, they, they they regularly talk about like you know it's like they they enjoy killing people or so they say or they go and dig up corpses. And then there's this secret that they've hidden on to for so long, and it was just like, oh, the self defense murder. Okay. Yeah, I was like, all right. right. Yeah. Why why are you feeling guilty about that? Just go with it. Indeed, yesterday you were you were threatening to to guillotine, um, you know, your your brother. Um, yeah. But but and that's you see that's why I rather cunningly earlier on brought up this question of uh, of how do they relate to their violence you see um, uh, full that, circle <laughs> is, this what, is this what happens when you plan the episode rather than just rock up with well you know it's, it's, it's a loose plan it's a loose plan I, I did I had I had more than a nineties rap in my head yes um, oh, but, oh the criticism but but <laughs> crucially you didn't have the nineties rap in your head you weren't even going to bring up the bloody music that's true that's true that's true. Yeah, you say yeah. You you bring, you bring the you bring the sauce. I I bring the uh, <laughs> I bring the oatmeal. Um, but <laughs> but yes, that's the thing, isn't it? Is that uh, as much as as they've been trying to answer this question of what you do next with the Adams family, there's still that barrier that they can't go beyond. They can't, and also as well, would we ever want them to actually go beyond into? I suppose what I'm saying is, ah, <clears throat> considering you and I both enjoy slightly darker entertainment, we quite enjoy a good serial killer series or movie, etc. You feel a little bit like they're non-committal at times, don't you? So I have to say, I, that isn't how I feel about it. I um, I get the joke, um, yeah. it, and the joke is that that they're deliberately talking about preposterous things quite possibly yeah but at the same time if they they keep on on telling the joke over and over again 
oh, whatever, it's still funny. No, no. It's still funny. <laughs> it's still funny that Wednesday's actively trying to kill her brother and her mum's giving her tips on how to do it. I'm sorry, that's funny. No, it is funny, but but the point is it's never going to And it's going to be funny forever. It's never going to forever happen. Forever and go- ever. <laughs> point is, the point is it's never going to happen. Um, and that's, that, I think, is possibly one of the, the big questions for you know Wednesday season two has been confirmed. Uh, and who knows where it goes from there but also just the broader sense of, of storytelling with the Adams family beyond it being a a one-shot Chaz Adams cartoon of implying something dark how do you take that a step forward without it becoming distasteful or becoming something I think which is fun I think they do it in the way that like the wider family are serial killers yeah yeah and they're praised for their kill count yeah I think that's how they've always done it mm-hmm Mm-hmm. You know, Cogsley's aware that, you know, Wednesday's trying to kill him and gets out of it. Yeah. And that's the game, isn't it? So you think, part, so, so in that sense, maybe upping the ante in terms of the relationship between implied violence and cunning in terms of how they they escape this that that's how you keep the joke going because yeah, i what, think that's should, always the thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, what I should say is, is that I, I don't I'm not saying I want to see to see Pugsley murder someone. I don't, you know, I really don't. I really don't. But... Uh, but no, I don't think he would. I think it would, if, if that happened, because I think, I think you get the sense, don't you, that Pugsley could be like a serial killer or like a, you know, like a... Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, in the, in the 1991 movie, um, uh, uh, no, no, no. In the in the sequel, uh, um, Debbie says to Gomez, "Oh, look at this lady killer," and he goes, "Acquitted." Gomez does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, but that's but that's the thing. I think I think those things might happen in the background. You know, like you might get this kind of comic bit of like, um, Pugs is not going to make it home this Christmas. He's serving thirty years for, um, <laughs> you know, for sniping old ladies yeah. on christmas day or something oh you know like <laughs> but that's that you know that's how they do it isn't it it's yeah. like these things are happening but they're happening off screen almost or it's 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 all about righteous violence um yeah you know, so the but again, guy, I don't think they're going to the do that because the righteous violence was the self-defense murder, wasn't it? And no, well, like, there's, there's that. But also, there's Wednesday and and the the uh, the rejuvenated ghost of a of an evil Puritan, for example. You know, mm. he, he's 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 someone against whom you can you can you can fight and and win and. and yeah, I think they may do it as monsters, mightn't they? Because that yeah. gets you to get the violent element and the the bit about enjoying the the violence out of it. But mm. I mean, I genuinely think a lot of these like the dark dark bits are going to be just happening around the scene because that's kind of you know that's what the acquitted bit is isn't it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um uh you know well, it's got yeah so at some date. point he he was well again even then they're not saying that he actually is a lady killer but they're saying that someone fingered accused him, him. yeah yeah and said yeah and so he had to go to court and <laughs> yeah but that yeah. that's the joke so so it's, i think those things do happen mm-hmm. in the family and i mean it even like you know you don't actually see wednesday trying to poison pugsley do you you just hear him accusing her of it yeah yeah you know so all or, or, or you're in a torture rack and they're like no that's not how you do it properly here this is how you tighten this strap yeah yeah you know like so but that but then you don't see the torture and and you see the so that's how I think. I think that's what the joke is that the, mm. that you're not seeing the violence. So they, they, there's the threat of it constantly there. Which which is more than the monsters. Um, oh yeah, and less than a horror movie. So and therefore yeah. that's more or less perfect for I guess for the Adams family. Um, I suppose I just yeah I just kind of help find find myself wondering. Um, Bring back Adult Wednesday. Well, actually, they realised that. Well, no, we're actually, that was so good. Yeah, interesting. If that's the point, isn't it? Because Adult Wednesday actually answered some of these questions. How does a self-assured person who, who's had that growth, that childhood interact with people, and also actually things like righteous violence? So there's one where she's talking about um, where the, this is the episode is looking at um, um, uh, family health clinics, as it were, and people protesting outside those, and and Wednesday, you know has a moral stance on it um 
did okay. I suppose. I suppose to 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 to, to sort of come to some sort of conclusion about the series. What 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 do you think? What do you think they should carry on with from this show? Because part part of me wonders whether or not they can continue with the sort of the the Harry Potterness of it, the sort of uh, Wednesday and the. I, don't know. I mean, I quite like the idea of Wednesday falling in love with somebody. Although they sort of toyed with that, and I don't think they did a. I mean, it was it was good, but it wasn't great. And I think because they've sort of started that, they can't. You know, she's had her first kiss now, hasn't she? So she mm. can't go back and do that again. No. Um, so I do like the idea of her kind of contemplating having a romantic relationship. Um, and I quite like the fact that she possibly doesn't want a romantic relationship like her mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so that also- would be quite interesting. Yeah. Quite. And I, I, I also think they've explored like themes of friendship, haven't they? Mm-hmm. And I, I hope they don't break her down to this kind of little love bubble of like, these are my pals and yeah. this is the stuff we do together, uh, which I don't, I hope they won't, you know, because I do want her to have some personal growth, but I don't want her to become not Wednesday. And I, I think they uh, they run the risk of serializing the school year like Harry Potter, don't they? Yeah. That's, yeah, and the way the way that they ended the series on the end of term and they began it on the beginning of term, it just feels yep. a bit. Don't do that again, please. Don't fall into that trap. Because also, and I hope they do something different than a little murder mystery. Because like I, I enjoyed it, but I'm like, it needs it needs to do more. It you know it it was a great introduction. I think General Tager did an amazing job. She was quirky and interesting. She carried it beautifully, mm-hmm. and there was enough little in you know interesting bits where you sort of um, just fall in love with her, aren't there? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and I think the character of Thing was done really well as well. Mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel I feel as though they also they also brought through the series lots of the 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 best parts of Adam Sandler of old. So you, mm. you you know as much as we criticise the portrayal of, for example, Morticia, I think they did have uh, strong hints of the fact that this is a family who dance when they feel when they feel passionate. For example, this yeah. is a family who um, uh, who, who have. Uh, uh, loyalty to the to the bone, you know this kind of thing, and 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 also as well, there's even a moment in Jenna Ortega's dance where she does one of the 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 famous dance moves from the TV series, um, mm-hmm. where um, is it Lisa uh, Lisa Loring when she was a uh, young Wednesday and she's dancing with Lurch? It's a very famous little clip on on YouTube. I don't um, know it. Yeah. Oh, you should you should watch it. Yeah, it's, it's 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 very of its time. It's very kind of mm-hmm. like again, it's the zany that the the, the, yeah. the producer of the series talked about. Um, but uh, unfortunately, um, no, sorry, sorry. So that so one of that move is shown for like a split second at the beginning of her dance in in the show, uh, in the in the Wednesday show. Um, unfortunately, though, uh, the actress recently died. Uh, she was sixty four. And oh. um, yeah, she died of a, a, a complications. I think heart attack resulting from a lifetime of uh, basically smoking and high blood pressure. So uh, massive stroke. Sorry, unfortunately. Mm. Um, not not <laughs> not that I mean to bring us down there, but so but the, the point is, I think I think the the show brought a lot to a modern audience in that sense for us and had the right bit of nostalgia as well because i mean they for us they had the christina ricci part well true i loved yeah yeah absolutely yeah, having christina ricci there was was good but but for us the 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 restaurant dance in uh in the adams family movies was 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 that sort of set piece moment or things like the babushka dance? They're basically, they've always had dancing, and it's in the show. Yeah, they've always had this this sort of uh, sense of. See, I don't think that was the fan service bit. I think the fan service bit for our generation was Christina Ricci, and I feel like there was this very much this thing of like, I was Wednesday, I'm passing the mantle, and actually, do you know, do you know, the mantle do you know, passing. Do you know, do you know, she wasn't in the show until very late. Don't care. The character wasn't was, was played by a different it, person until until very close to the end. That's why there's quite a few shots of her with obvious green screen behind her. They've, it they've, doesn't they've, matter. Can I tell you? It doesn't matter because that's the end product that was. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever came before that is irrelevant. That is the 
the product that they put out. Her inclusion was superb. But fan she service was great. is not the same as referencing the history of this of this family and bringing it to a new, to a new audience. But that's the bit that I was like, yes. Yeah, and I'm very happy for you. Go, Christina. <laughs> I love that woman. She is just so good. <laughs> Look, I, I, I do too. But I'm letting you have her for the purposes of this of the. Of this letting recording. me have her. <laughs> she can be yours. You can be her friend. Whatever. That's not what I mean. <laughs> This is not a. This is not a. I have to have her alone. You can celebrate her as well. She's amazing. In fact, like, go the women in this because Jenna Ortega and Christina Ricci steal the show. They do. They do. Uh, I also quite liked the. Uh, um, the headmistress. Yeah, headmistress was was pretty cool. But actually, the uh, the 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 roommate character having a werewolf struggling with her. Oh the, yeah, when she can't turn. Out. Yeah, I was also like, I, I, th- do you know, that had so many like moments where I was like, oh my god, this is like people waiting for their period. Yeah, Enid Sinclair. Yeah, that was the character yeah. name. Yeah. Um. But the, but I suppose the question is now, as I say, w- what happens next in terms of what they do, having reintroduced this, having re reinvigorated it, and having brought it to to a current audience because you know i think they're going to do i think they're going to get in an evil really evil head mistress slash master mm-hmm. who is going to come in and change the school and that's going to be the start i was just going to like turn the school into genuinely this is a school for serial it's going to be like, like oh it's going to well it's going to be umbridge isn't it oh i said do you think yeah yeah yeah. Maybe she will actually be nice and be like, we need some lights in this corridor. Can I have some daylight lamps in the bulbs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why is everything No, I don't want black? to just grow poisonous plants. Yeah. We need some magnolia on the walls. Yeah. Oh, I see. So there's going to be something painfully normal about her. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think that might be what it is. Fair enough. I suppose one final thing that I'm curious about uh, your opinion on is Tim Burton's influence, because this is Tim Burton's vision of the Adams family. Um, the poster itself actually says, from the imagination of Tim Burton. Um, I mean, Tim Burton's imagination is somewhere that I like to explore regularly. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Do you, think do you not that- like Tim Burton's stuff? Oh, no, I do. I adore it. But also at the same time, I feel as though he's, he's had a bit of a... Uh, uh, he's had a varied output in recent years. Um, sometimes big hits and big, big misses. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I can't help but wonder uh, to the extent to which the Adams family represents uh, um, a fairly obvious attempt to to recapture that sort of acceptable goth. Uh, see, I yeah, I mean, that is a thing, but I think... The thing is, because it's so known, mm-hmm. this is a gamble because he could have really messed it up and had backlash because it's beloved. Yeah, and also because Tim Burton has a because he as much as Tim Burton is known for for gothy, quirky and horror, macabre. macabre stuff, it's also a very acceptable face of the macabre, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, often... but I, I genuinely think like I don't think this was a sure thing for him at all. Because if you're, because like a lot of his other stuff, he's taken on something that he's created, hasn't he? Or mm-hmm. he's taken on something like, I don't know, Alice in Wonderland or something that's kind of morphable. Whereas I think the Adams family is already very grounded in what it is. You know, so you, so you think, taking... uh, unlike, for example, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where they Tim Burtonized a Roald Dahl story in this instance, yes. they've. He, he, I suppose maybe actually, because because also it's clear that, for example, in uh, Edward Scissorhands, that's very Adams Family esque. There's a critique of s- suburban mm-hmm. culture being seen through the 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 lens of an outsider coming into that community and the and the extent to which that community can and will accept him. Um, so maybe actually, the Adams Family was a perfect property to reboot his his career um because but yeah but that's only he was drawing on, on those charles adams roots that he clearly loved yeah, yeah but it, but it's only if he gets it right isn't it because if mm. you create because i mean you, you're right he has been a bit hit and miss and like this could have been a miss yeah 
because mm. if he'd have got, I think if he'd have gone too far mm-hmm. and strayed too far away from like what the Adams family is and loved for, rather mm-hmm. than in some, because in some places you see that homage, don't you? Yeah. You know, and and so I think if it, if it had gone into too much away from that that would have made that he had a flop. Yes. So I don't think this was like a sure thing, a perfect thing to do it. I mean, I think he did a really good job. Yeah, I absolutely think it was a risk. And I think, and to be honest, I think any creative project is a risk Mm -hmm. because your idea of what you want to produce Mm -hmm. and the audience's reaction to that don't necessarily couple in the way that they were uh, in the way that you would like no but but when we uh, but i get in this instance it's, it's a there's an extra element to that and that is that we all have a very strong well say fans of the adams family have a very strong sense of what they what they like about the adams family yeah morticia adams being a case in point for example yeah yeah um well he's actually got something on the horizon do you know what, what his next movie is currently in production? Uh, adams family 2 no. no no i don't know beetlejuice 2 Oh, yeah, not a yeah. fan of Beetlejuice. Well, and that's that's my well, I, I, I quite like Beetlejuice for what it is, but I don't think it needs a sequel. So, again, it's it's interesting how to be honest, I said that about Top Gun, and like that, that sequel was a baseball. So, <laughs> never say never. No, true, true, but but I, I think Beetlejuice 2 as uh, again, a, a risky proposition, yeah. Um, is, but yeah. Tim Burton's suffering from the same thing, isn't he? Of being like this this theme that we've been coming back to and over, you know, like he was revolutionary. He was. And then he became stylized part of culture. Yeah, absolutely. And now he's produces things where he's he's sort of mirroring his own success and yeah, sometimes it falls short of his own success. I think that's exactly it. I think in that sense, Wednesday Adams Wednesday, sorry, as a series could have run the risk of of feeling like self satire and parody, um, especially for Tim Burton. Um, uh, Dark, did you ever watch Dark Shadows? The the, uh, uh, the Johnny Depp film. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I thought I thought that was that was pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, it was it was okay. But but again, it was playing with with things that were on the line, on that line of being mm. a parody. Um, and so so uh, in that, I think my point being is that I think for Wednesday to have not come out like that, it shows that that, that either the team did a great mm-hmm. job at, at directing him or that actually he, he does still have it and he is still able well, to. I, 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 don't, I don't doubt he still has it. I kind of mm. just think like... It does. It just is whether it is what people still want. Well, whether it, to be blunt, whether it gets through a studio process intact. Well, yeah. You know, whether it is allowed to go through on the script, in the editing, in the marketing, in the... Because we know. don't want another Alien 3, do we? No, exactly. Exactly. Um, is I'm still else? bitter about Alien 3, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> is there anything else that, that, that you want to say about, about Wednesday? Um, I, well, I, I mean, basically kind of to round the whole thing off, mm-hmm. I, I did genuinely enjoy it. I thought it was really, really good fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to suspend belief in, yeah. in small elements about kind of some of my feelings about the Adams family in it. But again, it, I, I feel like it's one of these like alternate timelines, isn't it? That you get in stuff production now where I'm like, yeah, I'm happy to exist in this little world. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I think some of the performances were amazing, and I'm really looking forward to season two. Okay, okay. Uh, I feel as though it was uh, a a solid first swing, uh, yeah, and a, a solid first attempt to, to to answer this question of what you do next with the Adams family, um, and a but 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 also a little bit like because there's another very famous franchise that 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 you utterly adore there's always had the question mark over what happens after part two terminator um, oh, i know in that sense there's but there's then a... i i feel like the sarah connor chronicles did a good job oh, right up until the very last episode 
Well, because it shouldn't have been the last episode. No, exactly. Yeah, no, no, I know. But but that last episode, with the, again, there's a question there of what on earth do you do after that? Um, th- there really was. Come on. I, no, no, but this, this is yeah. a whole other episode. We're not going to go into, <laughs> into that right now. But the, so the point being is that... Uh, uh, it, it the it's a tightrope, and I think there's 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 yeah. there's still scope to go completely in the wrong direction, with the yeah. best intent in the world, and make a make a, a total equivalent of a Terminator flop. Um, yeah, you know. So so we'll, I guess we'll see what happens next. But but the Adams family remains for me right from the cartoons all the way through through the movies. Yes, the amazing Christina Ricci. Um, as such a Angelica a, Houston, Angelica does, Houston, uh, yeah, yeah, a shout out to uh, Raul Julia, um, Christopher Lloyd, yeah. <laughs> um, they remain a crucial part of my cultural lexicon yeah. and also a crucial part of my psyche. You know, I I love them, and uh, yeah, I kind of want to be a member of the family, and we kind of are. Ah, oh, we kind of are. I'm going to go with I don't want to be a part of their family, but I want to have the ethos of their family. <laughs> well, I, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably what I technically mean. I, for you would sake. absolutely hate to have like serial killers in your family and all these like notorious like criminals. You would no, hate but that. I, but You'd I would be love the house. I'd love the house. Yeah. Okay. But that's not the family. That's a building. Oh, that's true. <laughs> family issues. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah, fair enough. There's a building. No, but I, so, okay, okay, fine. So, let me let me refine that final point for you. Um, <laughs> apologies, uh, dear listener. What I mean by that is, I yeah, it's the ethos, and it's the fact that 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 the only thing that really truly disappoints the Adams is is when one of them is not being authentic to themselves. Yeah, and that's that's. And I think that's. I I I would go with you on that. I would hope that that idea of of supporting people to be their authentic self yeah. is kind of the bit that's wonderful about them isn't it yeah even if your authentic self is a bit weird and unusual absolutely ah so what are we talking about next time so next time we're going to be talking about disney princesses Yay. and the associated fairy tales and fables and all that kind of stuff around that kind of a uh, exciting genre yeah, yeah. I suppose there's lots of scope there to talk about the good, but also the bad as well. Yeah, um, yeah. and I, I am fully ready with my criticism head on. <laughs> Wait, really? People won't believe that we're ready to criticise something. I know, right? Yeah. It's going to be such a surprise. Pulling apart the things we love. So, <laughs> <laughs> that be the we love them enough <laughs> to bother. <laughs> I love you so much. I want to see your insides. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay. that sounds good. The universe calls back the diner to its swirling depths. The warm conversation and cosmic mystery must depart for now. We will materialize again somewhere new in time and space. But for now, it's goodbye from the Else Realm Diner. Yes. 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 Yes.